For many, bright lights at night are a sign of progress and civilization. But one man has made it his mission to keep the lights off at Hehuan Mountain. Liu Zhi'an from Jilong is the main force behind a campaign to reduce light pollution on Hehuan Mountain. His efforts paid off last year when the area received certification from the International Dark Sky Association. But Liu's work is far from over. Today, in our Sunday special report, we head up the mountain for some world-class stargazing and to discover what new challenges are ahead. Located in Nanto, 3,000 meters above sea level, is the Hehuan Mountain Chain. The average visitor will only stop here during the day, but after nightfall, Huhuan Mountain becomes more and more beautiful as the night sets in. The Milky Way hangs high above, a cascade of stars lighting the sky. This boundless starry night sky enraptures those who set eyes upon it. In 2019, the night sky, as viewed from here, gained international recognition, becoming certified by the IDA. Following locations in Asian neighbors Japan and South Korea, it became the third certified night sky in the region. In Asia, dark skies are still a relatively new concept. What the IDA recognizes is not a physical tourist site, but rather the reduction of light sources and the use of smart illumination to limit the effects of light pollution. In Taiwan, Liu was the first person to advocate for the dark sky concept. Prior to retirement, he was an ordinary office worker. With regard to controlling light pollution, the highest standard is a beautiful night sky. That's the highest standard, but it's not the final goal. The point of the whole process is to save energy, reduce emissions, and take care of the natural environment. In the beginning, what drove Liu in striving for international recognition was his passion for stargazing. He was enamored with the area's magnificent night sky. This is a device for measuring the quality of the night sky. We aim it up at the sky and press the button. The measurement is categorized by three levels. Here in Hehuan Mountain, we have a silver level sky. However, sometimes when the conditions are good, we can reach gold level. That is very rare and precious. Stargazing conditions are prime at Hehuan Mountain. This nightscape was so precious to Liu that he was willing to make the journey from Jilong to Nanto every week to carry out conservation work. It was one incident in particular that inspired him to create a sky conservation zone. In 2012, at the end of 2012, we discovered that in the area around the Yuanfeng parking lot, the Nanto County government had installed an LED-lit information board. Installing intensely bright LEDs in this area will end up affecting the nighttime activity of local wildlife. Originally, there were no lights around here and no light pollution. If we didn't do something, if we didn't take action, light pollution would eventually spread along the mountain road, finding its way higher up the mountain. Liu requested that the county remove the information board. He also proposed the establishment of a light-free conservation area, and he applied to the IDA for certification. The IDA responded. It said Hehuan Mountain was blessed with excellent stargazing conditions, but that more work was needed to develop them. It called for concerted planning to restore the night sky to its original splendor. The IDA required that at least 70% of the lights used on the mountain meet its standards. We took the harmful lights and added coverings to them so that the light wouldn't shine up into the sky. But the undertaking was easier said than done. The area Liu wanted to certify was managed by three government agencies, the Taroko National Park Office, Dongshi Forest District Office under the Forestry Bureau, and the Nanto County Government. Liu was only a retiree, an outsider. But through the help of a friend, he came in contact with a resident of Hehuan Mountain, the head of a Qingjing local assistance association, Li Tongshou. 
When we went to visit local officials, especially those working inside the park area, we asked for assistance with improving the lights, but we mostly just got the cold shoulder. Some officials had the mindset that if they didn't get involved, they wouldn't be able to make a mistake. We kept explaining to them, kept telling them that we just wanted to take a look and take some pictures. They would often tell us no because the issue wasn't handed to them by superiors. They would tell us we couldn't just look as we pleased. As they attempted to work with the officials, documents were passed around and days went by without action. Li and Liu decided they might as well spend their own money and deal with the lights on their own. So every week, Liu drove great distances in his own car to modify light installations. We always set up very early, before the sun came up from Jilong, rushing here to get the work done. We stuck a layer of aluminum foil over the top halves of the lights. Over the course of a year, Liu modified 200 lights. But this was not quite enough. The IDA also wanted neighboring communities to be on board. Qingjing Farm is actually only an hour's drive away from the stargazing park. That farm is another well-known international tourist site. We proposed to the IDA that the whole of Renai Township could, over the next several years, undergo a light pollution improvement plan. The IDA thought that it was a very good idea. The IDA conducts its own inspections on certified sites each year. Included as a part of the site, Qingjing and its surroundings would also have to be inspected. This meant that of the 120 hostel operators in Qingjing, at least 30 would need to make improvements to their lighting in the first year. Within five years, 90 percent of the light sources in Qingjing must be eliminated. Within 10 years, light pollution in all of Renai must be reduced. To meet the IDA's requirements, Liu visited each of Qingjing's hostels one by one. After all of his running around, a consensus was struck on all sides, and the work of reducing light pollution was set in motion. In August last year, Huan Mountain was officially certified by the IDA as a dark sky area. In the years since Huan gained certification, its light pollution woes haven't gone away. In August, we visited Huan Mountain ourselves. Our timing coincided with one of the three major astronomical events of the year, a meteor shower in the Perseus constellation. While we were there, the mountain was host to a non-stop stream of cars. At the Yuanfeng stargazing location, astronomy buffs crowd together on the observation platform to take in the sky. In a sea of black, one man suddenly pulls out a laser pointer and begins waving it around before being told to stop by those around him. There are also drivers who pull over but leave their car running, headlights constantly shining forward. When asked to leave, the drivers continue along to Uling, where a similar scene unfolds. As the main proponent behind Ho Huan's dark sky, Li is deeply pained by the situation. The chaos, the noise, the people barbecuing, those filming, the people shining their headlights, and then there's the people parking where they please or coming and going every which way. When I saw all of this, I was deeply troubled. People didn't behave better after we obtained international certification. Lee is worried because in each year following certification, the IDA will audit the mountain stargazing conditions. There are man-made satellites in orbit, and one of them tests for light pollution on the Earth's surface. The information it gathers is then uploaded to a website. People can go to that site and understand the situation in Taiwan and learn what changes have occurred in terms of the quality of Taiwan's skies for stargazing. The Nanto County government says it's received complaints about the low roadside lights it installed in Huan, with visitors saying they are too bright. Officials say they're working on resolving the issue, as well as other new light pollution concerns. 
With regard to the management of the stargazing location of the Yuanfeng area, the county government is considering having regulations. These include rules of nighttime cooking or camping. The county will also put up signs. We're even assessing the possibility of having personnel stationed there, with the night staff going on patrol and issuing warnings and fines. We will also be working with schools, including the elementary and junior high schools in the township. We'll be starting from zero, and we hope to slowly expand the policy throughout the township with an eye toward reducing light pollution. The government hopes to work with people in the community to ensure dark sky protection for the long term. After all, if one day the clouds part and the stars in the sky can no longer be seen, IDA certification won't be the only thing lost.